I have three mentors. So anytime I think, anytime I had a little dilemma in my life, I write a really good description of my dilemma before I reach out to them. Because I don't want to waste their time, right? right? My mentors are VIPs. I don't want to waste a minute of their time. So, so first I write a really good description of the problem, and then I summarize it. I summarize the context, the problem. I summarize my options, and I summarize my thoughts. Because i got to make this succinct. I don't want to send somebody a 20-page long email. So I have to make this as succinct as possible. What does that in practice look like? A half, oh, half page, page? Yeah, half page. Like, it's like bullet points for everything instead mm-hmm. of paragraphs, right? Yep. As succinct as I can. And then before I send it to them, I try to predict what this person would say. So each of those three. Right, right. What anybody would say to this. But yeah, what this mentor would say, what that mentor would say. I know the way this guy thinks. I've read all his books. I know the way. And we've talked a lot. I know what he would say. So then I internalize that. And I address those points that I'm predicting they would say. I'm going to address those in advance, again, to not waste their time. When you say address them, what do you mean by that? Kind of like how you asked, I said something five minutes ago and you asked me a question like, can you give me an example of that? Or how yeah, do you know this? Yeah. So it's like, okay, I knew you were going to ask that. So you know. Here's my follow-up. Right. Yeah. So I'll address those in advance, again, so as not to waste their time. And then again, one last time, I try to predict, okay, well, now that I've addressed- You have an answer ready for whatever they might come back with. But Mm -hmm. I include it in the initial summary of the situation. And then, after I've done that whole process, I don't need to bother them anymore, (laughs) because the answer is now clear. (laughs) Because I've just done the work of summarizing everything and imagining what they would say. So, the punchline is, the truth is, I haven't talked to my mentors in years- and one of them doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> These are my mentors. And so okay. this is how I think. It's kind of like Napoleon Hill talked about the master mind or whatever. Like he yep. was like, you know, imagine it, Abraham Lincoln is there. What yeah. would Abraham Lincoln say? Yeah, to totally. You? So I think that you're right. I also get a lot of emails from people saying like, I need a mentor. Will you mentor me? Mm-hmm. How do I find a mentor? And this is my answer. Like, it's all in your head. It's about the summarization of your situation, thinking of it from another person's point of view. You can predict what this person would say. If you're a fan of their books and their podcasts and their talks, you know what they would probably say. So do it yourself. Who is, if you're willing to share, the person who doesn't know you exist? It was Tyler Cowen. Ah. I just emailed him two weeks ago to say thank you. (laughs) Thanks for your years of service. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. For his continued inspiration. And he sent me back a tiny little thanks. Seth Godin Mm -hmm. is one. He knows I exist. (laughs) We don't talk that often. But I very often think, like, what would Seth Godin say? He walks the walk. He's another example of someone who walks the walk. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not as common as you would hope. No. Yeah. Who's the third? It's actually changing. I don't know right now. Keith Richards. (laughs) (laughs) Bjork. (laughs) What would Bjork do? Chuck E. (laughs) Cheese. That would be great. You know, that's thoroughly useful. Nicodemus. If you have a fictional, a fictional person can be your mentor. Yeah. You know, like, what would, well, fuck, you know, what would Jesus do, right? Yeah. Like, people still do that. Like, okay, I'm not sure what to do. What would Jesus do? Mm-hmm. That's a perfectly good mentor. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree with you. And for those people who might wonder, I actually do something very similar. Okay, can you tell? Yeah, absolutely. So I try to spend time with people I, I admire and aspire to be more like in some capacity, right? Because I do think you become the people you spend the most time with. So to bring up a name that we've already brought up, I think actually a lot about Matt Mullenweg because he's Mm. very calm in almost all circumstances. Not all. I know what a handful of things that bother him, but he's very, very calm and measured and good at perspectival knowledge, taking alternative positions, taking the counter position on his own thoughts, his own opinions, Mm. his own goals. So I often think when I get dysregulated or upset about something, I'm getting wound up. I'm like, what would Matt do in this? What would Matt say to me? If Matt were in my shoes, what would Matt do? And I've also done that in writing exercises where I actually just sit down with my older self oh, wow. who has figured it out. So if I'm talking to a version of myself who's 10 years older, 20 years older, who has figured this out, mm. what might that older, wiser version of me say. And I just write out the dialogue. Mm. And by the end, I'm like, huh, okay. Yeah. Doesn't always give you some magic solution, but 
it is astonishing how often that will give you some type of clarity or maybe relief that helps you to cling less strongly to whatever the challenge or problem or question was that you had in mind. It's really remarkable. So I do something yeah. very similar, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. Sometimes even just asking, I get emails about once a week where somebody asks me a big question by email. And then at the end, they say, actually, you don't even really have to answer this. Just honestly asking you the question helped me get some clarity. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like just the act of opening their email client and starting with it and going, okay, I want to ask Derek Sivers this thing. Yeah. You know, it's like just... Even if I intend to reach out to a mentor about something, I still go through the exercise of trying to crystallize my thinking so I don't waste their time. Even if it's a really close friend. Like I don't, I, if I don't want to be lazy. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't want to ask them something that could be resolved with five minutes of Googling. Yeah. Right. Or five minutes of introspection. It's like whenever I go to anyone, I want to be able to say, basically, here's the situation. Here are some of my assumptions. Here's what mm -hmm. I've already tried. Mm -hmm. Like I've tried A, B, C, D, and E, and I'm not quite figuring it out. And then followed by a super specific question. But asking the mentors around your imaginary table and doing that homework, I think is, is it's something that I do and I recommend to everyone. And there is some selfish motive here. Like I would like to have fewer than several thousand emails <laughs> to come in with like, how can I launch my book? Please tell me. <laughs> right. is, you know. And I'll admit, I actually got Oddly shy two minutes ago when you asked me who the third one was, because actually it's, it's been you in the past. No. Oh. Yeah. And I didn't want to bother you with things. So mm. I'm just like, I was tempted, you know, I've got yeah. your phone number. I could have yeah. just texted you. And, and I'm like, no, hold on. <laughs> and I'll just do it for something. Never mind. I didn't ask you. Yeah. You know, I think about you. I think about you, Matt. It's funny you mentioned Seth, because Seth would be on a short list for me mm. as well, of people who really think, and more than think, it's question. Yeah. Right? The musts, the shoulds. Yeah. The have tos. I'm like, wait a fucking second. That's nonsense. You know, I feel like you're very good at that, which is part of the reason I've read uh, your first book so many times. So, no, I'm all shy. <laughs> <laughs>